Hey there, engineers. Welcome to Civil Engineering Academy. Once again, we're looking at a problem from geotechnical engineering, and this one deals with relative compaction and proctor testing. And the problem reads like this. A proctor test is performed on a sample of soil using a 1 30th of a cubic foot mold, which is a standard size for proctor tests, by the way. Um, the test data produced by varying the water content of the soil sample is listed in the table. If 0.035 cubic feet of compacted soil tested at the site had a mass of 4.3 pounds wet and 4.2 pounds dry, what is most nearly the percentage of relative compaction of the soil at the site? And we've got an array of possible answers here. So how are we going to tackle this one? Well, uh, we need to remember uh, some of our proctor test theory and obviously consult our FE reference handbook and look at some of the phase relationships that we have with soil. And this relationship uh, you have to derive a little bit, but um, there is a formula that says rho sub d, which is the dry... Density of the soil can be calculated by taking the M sub T, or the total mass, and dividing it by 1 plus W, which is the percentage of water content, times the total volume of the soil. And this equation is going to be key in, um, in solving this. Uh, on top of that, um, you want to remember uh, what the formula is for uh, relative compaction. And the FE reference manual has, um, has that formula as well. Um, and I'll list it a little bit differently than what's listed in the uh, FE reference handbook. They've got a gamma sub D um, over a gamma sub d max. I'm just going to stick with this notation. We're going to call it rho sub d or the dry density divided by the rho sub d max. The difference between rho and gamma when we're dealing with either unit weights or unit masses is just uh, the acceleration of gravity. So usually, uh, as you'll probably remember, is gamma um, is usually a unit of weight per unit of volume, whereas rho is usually listed as a unit of mass per unit of volume. Um, and so in, in this problem, I'm going to use a uh, row, which is obviously unit of mass per unit of volume versus, um, using the gamma notation that's listed in, in your FE reference handbook. We can still get at this, uh, using this notation. So let's tackle this thing. So let's look at our charted data. It looks like we had five tests performed where, uh, the sample mass changed when uh, water was added to to the sample. So we're going to use this information in the table to calculate our dry densities um, for each test and see how that plots out on a proctor test um, chart. Um, and then using that chart, we're going to find the maximum dry density and then see if we can't figure out what this uh, relative compaction number is. Okay, so let's, uh, let's look at test number one right here. So if I take the dry density formula and run it through for each one of these tests... Let's see what we come up with. So we've got our total uh, mass, or our sample mass for test number one at 4.3 pounds. 
And if we divide that by one plus the water content, which we had at 0 0.075 times the volume, which was given as 1 30th of a cubic foot, standard volume for a proctor test. And I calculate that for test number one. I should come out with 120 pounds per cubic foot. And so let's run that now for test number two. So now we're dealing with 4.5 pounds. And we're going to divide all of that by 1 plus the water content, which in this case is 0 0.098. And again, this is all times by 1 30th cubic foot. So for test number two, if we run that through, we should come up with 122.9 pounds per foot cubed. Okay, let's run calcs for test three. So on this one, we were at 4.6 pounds. And we're going to divide all of that by one plus the water content on this one was 0 0.111. And again, we're times in all this by 130, or 130th, excuse me, cubic feet. If we do that for test three, let's see, we should come up with 124.2 pounds per cubic foot. And we're just going on right on down the line here. So for test four, 4.4 pounds all divided by R1 plus 0 0.13. We've got 13% water content on that one. And that's, again, all times by 1 30th of a cubic foot. So for test number four, we should come out with 116.8 pounds per cubic foot. And last but not least, we'll run the numbers for test number five. And we had 4.3 pounds. And all that is divided by one plus... 0 0.145 is our water content. And again, times 1 30th of a cubic foot. And after all that, we should get through test number five and figure out that we've got 112.6 pounds per cubic foot there. And again, we've, we've just used this formula right here to calculate our dry densities for each of the tests, okay? Now, uh, once we've calculated this, we could, and I've, I've created, uh, I've put all this data in a uh, tabular format. So here's what we've just discovered. We've uh, calculated all of our dry densities based on the water content that was in the sample and so here we have it 7.5 percent 120 and you can go on down the line and see the tabulated uh, data there and if we were to plot this this proctor test on a chart and it looks like I've overrun this a little bit but uh, this is what it would look like so here's our dry density going up the y-axis our water content along the x-axis and we can see graphically that our density, our dry density peaks at the 11.1% water point. So that's our 
maximum dry density. We get our maximum dry density when um, the soil water content is 11.1%. Okay, so now we know our maximum dry density given uh, uh, the 11.1% water content. Now, how do we get at the relative compaction? Well, we've got our... Um, Dry density that we measured, and we probably should put another little subscript called field, right? This is the, the dry density that was measured in the field, and we're going to divide that by the dry density, the maximum dry density that we just discovered, um, which is this value right here, doing our proctor test. And uh, see if we can't figure out what the relative compaction of the soil is in the field. So if we take the field sample and calculate the dry density, we can say that rho D, and we'll use another subscript again here. We'll call it rho sub D field equals the mass of the field sample divided by the volume of the field sample. Okay, so that was given in the problem statement, right? So um, the dry uh, mass of the soil in the field was 4.2 pounds. That's a four there. And the volume that was in the field that they examined was 0 0.035 cubic feet, okay? So we calculate that. Uh, let's see, we should come up with 120 pounds per cubic foot. Hopefully you can see that, it's 120. So that's our, our row in the field, our density in the field, and we know our max density here we calculated at 124.2 and um, and so our relative compaction is just taking our rho sub d that we calculated that was in the field 120 pounds per cubic foot and dividing it by our maximum that we found doing our proctor test which was 124.2 pounds per cubic foot. And we run that through our calculator and you should come up with something like 96.6%. Should come close to that. Uh, which corresponds, of course, to answer C. So that's a nice little problem that measures um, relative compaction on soil that's been compacted at a at a job site. Hopefully that helps you out and we will see you on the next one.